welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1509. Hey, we're going to see how to do a conditional formatting array formula that involves two lookup values. And this is our formula. Yes, in fact, right in the conditional formatting dialog box, we're going to do an array formula. Now, over on the sheet 1509, here's our situation. We have a sales table. Notice product and color. Over here is a lookup table. And I would like to highlight each row where a corresponding product at that color has been sold. So for example, if I look through the sunshines, I cannot find a sunshine that is gray. So that row should not be formatted. But there definitely is a sunshine blue and a sunshine red. Now what this means is that for conditional formatting, we actually have to highlight the entire table, home, conditional formatting, and pick a rule that will add formatting to each cell. Now that means that each cell has to have a logical test that comes out true or false. So this first row needs three falses, but the second row one, two, three. All three cells need a logical test that says true. Please add the formatting. Now, the problem for us here is, of course, if we go up to conditional formatting and try to pick a rule, there is no rule for this situation. Because our situation is this. We have two lookup values. I need to combine sunshine and gray, and then look through two different columns. In essence, looking up to see if this combination is somewhere in this table. Now what we would like to do is create a logical formula that will give us that true and false for every cell. So we have to highlight the table, go up to conditional formatting, down to new rules, use formula, and then create a formula right here. The problem with this method is twofold. This is really small, and it's hard to create our formula. And if it doesn't work, because the formula is stored in memory, we can't tell where the error is. So whenever you have a complicated formula, it's best to come off to the side and in a small range, create your formula, copy it over and down, and see if the patterns of trues and falses work. Then we'll copy the formula up into the conditional formatting dialog box. Now anytime we're trying to look something up and find out if it's in another list, whether or not it's a single item or multiple items, the function we use is the match function. Look up value. Well, I have two values, so I'm going to click on the first one. Now I have to think carefully. Since I want this formula to copy over, and remember the goal is all three cells in the row highlighted. So that means each one of these cells has to look at sunshine. But when I copy the formula down, it's got to move to the next sunshine or next product all the way down. So that means I hit the F4 key to lock it, but not both dollar signs. I'm going to hit the F4 again, F4 again. I'm only locking the E. So as I copy across, it's locked on the E column. But when I move down, there's no dollar sign in front of the 5. So 5 will move to 6, which is exactly where the next product is. Now I have to join it using the join symbol, ampersand, shift 7. Now I join it to color, F4, 1, 2, 3 times. Now I type a comma, look up array. Guess what? We're going to have to make an array operation here. By the way, that's not an array operation or an array formula because there's an operator. And on either side of the operator, there are single items. Now when we come over to joining two columns, we're going to have an array operation. Because on either side of the join operator, there will not be one item, but multiple items or an array of items. So I highlight the product column. I'm going to hit the F4 because that needs to be locked in all directions. Ampersand Shift 7. And then I highlight the color column, F4 to lock it. Array calculations and array formulas are simple. Whatever the operator, whether it's multiplying, dividing, or joining, if one of the sides has more than one item, 
meaning an array of items, you have an array operation. Now let's compare here. I'm going to click on Lookup Value. I'm going to hit the F9 key. We can see that, sure enough, it gives me sunshine gray. But on either side, there were single items. Notice also that the result of the operation gives us a single item. Right there, you know you don't have an array operation. Control Z. But now let's click on Lookup Array and hit the F9 key. Wow. That returns a resultant array of lots of items. That means we have an array calculation, which means the whole formula will be an array formula. Now notice it gives us exactly what we want. Product and color join together. Control Z to undo that. Now I come to the end, comma. Match type is exact match because we don't have sorted columns. Zero, close parentheses. Now this is an array formula. Anytime we have an array operation, we have to look at the function and the argument it sits in. Now, there's only five functions that don't require any special keystroke to get the formula to work. And we're not using any of them here. The match function, lookup array, if I don't use the right keystroke to enter this, the formula will not calculate. Now, I am not going to use the right keystroke. I'm going to use Control Enter just because I want to put it in the cell and keep the cell selected. Then I'm going to copy it over. Then I'm going to copy it down. If I go to the last cell and hit F2, I can see that all of the cell references are pointing to the right place. But every cell gives me a value error, which says you forgot the special keystroke. So I'm going to come up to the top, F2, and now I'm going to use the special keystroke, Control-Shift-Enter. NA, that's what I want because it did not find sunshine gray over there. Now I copy it to the side and then double click and send it down. Now we can see what match does. It doesn't actually look something up. Match tells you the relative position of the first item in the list. Not only that, but if they're duplicates, it only reports the first occurrence. So sunshine blue, if we count 10 rows down. There it is. It found sunshine blue. It told us the relative position of the item in the list. Now remember, we need trues and falses to trigger the right conditional formatting. But here's the crazy thing. For formulas, this wouldn't work, especially because the error gets in the way. But for some reason, they built a conditional formatting dialog box. If I highlight this range and put that formula just the way it is into the dialog box, that dialog box will interpret NA or false or 0 as a false, and it will not apply the formatting. But any non-zero number will apply the formatting. So guess what? All I have to do is use this formula right here. I'm copying the upper left formula in edit mode, Control C, Escape. Now I'm going to highlight the entire range. Because I copied the upper left formula, I have to make sure that the active cell is the upper left. If I do it this way, it will not work. Because in memory, that dialog box will take that formula and copy it over and down. Now I can go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format, Control-V. Here's the other amazing thing about the Conditional Formatting dialog box. It doesn't require any special keystroke like array formulas do when we're in the cells. So I simply paste it and add whatever formatting I want. Click OK, click OK, and just like that, it is working. If I change this red to gray and hit Enter, just like that, my conditional formatting is applied. Control-Z. All right, so that was a little fun with array formulas, both in the cells and in our conditional formatting dialog box. Now, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.